Hey guys, wanna build a robot? Welcome back guys. This video is part of our series all about the new Rover. And in this video, we're gonna be covering chapters one and two of the ebook. That's getting started and learning how to program the RGB LEDs on the bottom of the Rover. If you're looking for videos about how to solder up, assemble, or wire up the Rover, we'll have a link to those in the description. In this video, we're gonna cover how to install the Arduino IDE, add the ESP32 board files, and then get started programming the Rover. The very first step is going to be getting the software that we'll use to write our code. Now to do that, we're going to download what's called the Arduino IDE. Now if you've been building robots for a while, you probably already have the Arduino IDE downloaded. And if that's the case, I would make sure that you update just in case you have an older version that is not compatible. That's not super likely, but just in case, it's definitely a good idea. If you're downloading Arduino for the very first time, it is super, super easy. The first thing that you want to do is head over to the Arduino homepage. That's arduino.cc. Now, Arduino has been around for a really long time, and there are alternatives to the Arduino IDE, um, but what we found is it's a great way to get started. And so, in order to download the Arduino IDE, you're going to want to head over to the Software tab and click on Downloads. He'll be brought to the Downloads page, and we're going to download the Windows installer. Once you open up the Arduino IDE, you'll see a screen just like this. And this is where we'll write code for our rover. But before we can do that, we need to add the ESP32 board files into the Arduino IDE. And we do that by selecting the Preferences menu. Now, once you open the Preferences tab, you'll see the Additional Board Manager's URL section. And that might sound confusing, but it's really not too bad. If you click on the little square, you'll see this menu. Now, more than likely, you'll only see in one URL. And all we need to do is add in a URL to this menu. Now this website is where we can access the board files and this is what Arduino needs to find. Now we have that link on screen now. And so you can either pause and type it in or you can copy it directly from the uh, guide or the tutorial, however you'd like. So long as you have that URL inside this menu, you'll be good to go. Once you have that additional board URL uh, typed into the box, you're gonna to head over to the tools tab board and click on the boards manager. When you click on the boards manager, you have the option of typing something into this search bar right here. We're going to go ahead and type in ESP32. And so you see the ESP32 by Espresso Systems board package. Now I already have this installed. So you won't have this remove button. All you have is the install button. So go ahead and install those board packages and you'll be good to go. Once you have the ESP32 board packages installed, if you head over to the Tools tab, under the Board section, you'll now see a bunch more options. And so, the standard Arduino IDE has the Arduino AVR-based boards. You'll see I have tons of different other sections for different kinds of boards. But what was we just added was the ESP32 section. So here we see there are so many different kinds of ESP32 boards, and they are all Awesome. Um, the one that we're going to worry about today is the Duet ESP32 Dev Kit V1 because that is the most compatible with the uh, ESP32 that we uh, use in our rover. And so that is what you're going to select whenever we plug in the ESP32, and that will allow us to upload code onto our rover. Now, chapter one of our ebook is all about getting started soldering up the circuit board, assembling the chassis, wiring everything up. And chapter two is where we start to program some of the awesome features built into the rover. One of the most fun features are the integrated RGB LEDs. Now, these aren't your standard RGB LEDs. These are what are known as individually addressable RGB LEDs. The actual model is the WS2812, but these are also commonly referred to as NeoPixels. And what are so cool is that each LED can be programmed with its own color, its own timing, which gives you tons and tons of options for doing some really cool effects. And the very first step is super easy. We're gonna start by programming one LED, then move on to all four LEDs, and then add in some awesome features. Let's get started. 
All right, so if you're ready to go, you have a few options. You can open up a brand new Arduino code window by heading to the File tab and New and follow along. You can also find this code on the flash drive that came with your rover if you picked up one of our kids. Either way, this is referred to as RGB example one. And again, all we're trying to do is light up one of the NeoPixels just to show you guys how this code works. The first command I want you to take a look at here is hashtag include. Now, the NeoPixel, right, are individually addressable RGB LEDs. They are really advanced. They have a chip in them that allows us to do some pretty awesome things. But because of that, in order to get it to work, we need some background code that will allow us to make our code a little bit shorter. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines of code, and that's all it takes. But if we didn't have this library file, our lines of code might be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of lines long. Now, installing this library file is really, really easy, and there are two main methods. The easiest is to head to the Sketch tab, go to Include Library, and click on Manage Libraries. Now, the Library Manager is an awesome tool. There are so many library files that are published in the Library Manager. Installing a new library is as simple as searching for it. So we're going to go ahead and type in Add a Fruit Neo Pixel. Now, Adafruit is an awesome company. I have so much respect for them. They make awesome boards and have really great tutorials. And the NeoPixel is what they call the WS2812. And so we're going to use their library file that they created in order to make things easier for us. And so once you've searched for the Adafruit NeoPixel library, you're going to go ahead and install. So like we said before, our first goal is just to get one LED on. But before we do that, we need to do a few things to set up our code. And so these first three lines here are all about setting up our NeoPixel strip. Now, in reality, we have four LEDs, but you could use this exact same code to uh, program an LED strip or an LED ring or even an LED matrix. There's all kinds of really, really cool stuff you can do. But the first thing that we want to talk about is this second line here, define pin 18. Now, in this case, 18, refers to the pin on the ESP32 that we're using. What's so cool is that because these LEDs are chained together, we only need one pin to control all four LEDs. Thanks to our circuit board, our RGB LEDs are wired to pin 18. Our third line of code has to do with the number of LEDs that we have. In this case, we have the numPixels variable, and we have written four. What's so cool is, you know, as long as you have the power to back it up, you could chain together so many different NeoPixels. You can have super long LED strips, and um, like we said before, an LED matrix, an LED ring. Um, but we have four, so we're going to keep this at four. Now, the last line of code is about setting up our object. Now, in this case, we're going to create a NeoPixel object that we're going to call Strip. Now, if you're not familiar with creating objects, that's totally fine. If you're brand new to programming, don't worry about that. Um, if you've written in other object-oriented programming languages, this might make more sense. But generally speaking, we have our strip object that holds a bunch of different information for us. It includes the number of pixels, the pin we're going to use, as well as the frequency that we need for these particular NeoPixels. Now, our second section of code, the void setup, is actually pretty straightforward. The begin command allows us to use our strip. In this case, we have our strip of LEDs. And the set brightness method allows us to set the brightness of our LEDs. In this case, 255 is full brightness. Now, here in our void loop is where we actually tell our LEDs what to do. The first command that we use is the clear command. And that just gets everything ready, make sure that there are no stray pixels, and that we are good to go. The second command is set pixel color. And so here we see a couple of options. Now, the first is this zero, and that might look kind of weird. And at this point, it's important to explain something that's pretty foundational to computer science. Now, humans always start counting at one, right? One, two, three, four, five. But machines almost always start counting at zero. So in this case, having a zero right here is actually talking about our first LED. Now to the computer, that's the zeroth LED. And that may seem kind of weird, but all we need to know right now is that if we want to turn on the very first LED, we need to have a zero right there. The rest of this command is setting up the color. Now, in this case, we have three sets of numbers, 255, 0, and 0. Now, this 
refers to the red value, this refers to the green value, and this refers to the blue value. And what's so cool is by mixing red, green, and blue, we can make these LEDs show all kinds of colors. But we're gonna start with just one color. We have 255 for red. The last command that we have is the show command, and that's what actually displays what it is that we want. And so in order to get one LED shining one color, we only need these three lines of code in our void loop. Once you have all that code written out, it's time to upload this code to our rover and to see if it worked. Now to do that, there are a couple of things that you're gonna wanna do. Now, this is first time setup that if you have this done, you know, uh, once, you really don't need to repeat it, which is nice. But before we can upload code, we wanna head over to the tools tab. Select the tools tab, and there's a lot of information that may look kind of confusing. Now, the board should be set to the do it ESP32 dev kit one. And again, all you need to do is find it on the list right here. It may take a second, but this is where it is right here, the do it ESP32 dev kit one. Upload speed, keep the same. Flash frequency, keep the same. Core debug level, keep the same. Now, the next thing you wanna check is the port. Now, I have all kinds of COM ports, and you will probably only have one, but whatever that COM port might be, right, it won't be 11, you wanna make sure you have a check mark. So you make sure that on your COM port, you have a check mark. Other than that, that's all you need to change. Once you have that taken care of, you can go ahead and upload your code. So I'm gonna go ahead and click upload and my code will compile. Now this is just the Arduino IDE, checking to make sure we don't have any errors and that we're good to go. Now, once your code compiles, you're gonna see connecting on the bottom and that's trying to upload this code. While you see connecting, it's very important that you press the button boot or IO0 on your ESP32. That will put the ESP32 in upload mode and will let you send code to your rover. If everything went as planned, you should see a single red LED on the bottom of your rover. All right, we've got one LED down and it's time to program the other three. Now in the book, you'll see that this is actually project number two. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the code that we wrote from the last example and add in the other three LEDs. Thankfully, the process is pretty easy. So this, this middle command here, right? This is what set the very first LED to red. And what's so cool is getting the other LEDs started is super, super easy. I'm gonna start off just by copying and pasting this line. And so in this first line of code here, the zero, that's what lit up the very first LED. And so what's awesome is getting the second LED to, to light up is as easy as changing the zero to a one. And now we can repeat that process one more time. Cause again, we have four LEDs on the bottom of the Rover and we want all four of them lit up. So we change this guy to two and this guy to three. And that's it. Now we have all four of the LEDs on. That being said, we've already done red, right? And so we have the option of controlling the amount of red, green, or blue. So what do you say we switch this up? All right, so now we've switched up our color scheme a little bit. Now, again, the middle number here, that's the green value. And then the last number here is the blue value. So here we have full brightness on green, no brightness on blue, a little less green, now some blue, all blue, and then a little less green and a little bit of blue. And again, this is just, just an example. And so you can actually pick whatever combination you want. So zero to 255 for the first column, the second column, or the third column. So feel free to make whatever colors you want. Now, this is just the color scheme that we have in our book, but it's a great example of how easy it is to get all four of the LEDs working. Once you have the color scheme that you want, feel free to upload your code and see what happens. Sure enough, just like in our code, we have all four LEDs lit with varying shades of blue and green. Okay, so it's time to move on to project number three. So project one was just getting one LED lit. Then project two was getting all four of the LEDs lit. 
But again, because these LEDs are what's known as individually addressable, there's all kinds of awesome stuff that we can do. So even though these LEDs are in a strip one after another, each one can be programmed independently. So for project three, we're gonna add an animation effect. So we'll start off by setting the very first LED uh, as sort of a teal here. So we'll go full brightness uh, blue and full brightness green. We'll turn the rest of the LEDs off. Then let's add in what's known as a delay. The delay command is really, really important. And so this will say that we want this LED shining this sort of blue green color for a 10th of a second. Then let's copy and paste. So like we said, we want to create a sort of animation effect. And so let's go ahead and turn off the first LED. And we'll turn on the second. Once we have that done, we'll go ahead and copy and paste again and follow the exact same process. Last but not least, we'll program the last LED. Now you might notice I went from number four back to number three, um, and that's just personal preference. You know, that's how we have it organized uh, with the actual LEDs on the circuit board, but you can do this in whatever order you want. There's tons of customization you can do. But we'll see here that by turning on the LEDs one at a time, super, super fast, right? So every 10th of a second, we end up with a really cool chasing LED effect. Once you have this set the way you'd like, feel free to upload and let's see what happens. If everything went as planned, You'll see all four LEDs lighting up one at a time every tenth of a second. Now, just like that, we've reached the end of chapters one and two, controlling the LEDs on your rover. Now, keep in mind, there are tons of other really cool effects you can do, like this uh, rainbow effect here. And we have some examples on the flash drive that came with your kit. Stay tuned for our next video all about how to program the onboard speaker. Thanks for watching, guys.